Hello and welcome back to part two of uh, talking about this filthy, disgusting, pedophile Muhammad and how he is no prophet of God and anybody who approves of him is going to burn big time by God for approving the filth that he did. In Sahih Bukhari, book 002, number 0572, Aisha said, Whenever I found dry semen on the garments of the Messenger of Allah, may piss be upon him, I scraped it off with my nails. What kind of little girl, what kind of prophet is your prophet that turned a little girl into doing such a thing? She should be enjoying her life as a child, playing with toys, playing with her friends, instead of scraping off semen from your filthy, disgusting pervert of a false prophet, Muhammad. Likewise, in Sahih Bukhari, narrated Aisha, the prophet engaged me when I was a girl of six years. We went to Medina and stayed at the home of Benin al-Harith bin Khazarj. Then I got ill and my hair fell down. Later on, my hair grew again, and my mother, Amruman, came to me while I was playing in the swing with some of my girlfriends. This is so filthy, I feel like I'm going to puke. Later on, uh, so, sorry, she called me and I went to her, not knowing what she wanted to do to me. She caught me by the hand and made me stand at the door of the house. I was breathless then, and when my, beating, when my breathing came all right, she took some water and rubbed my face and head, and head with it. Then she took me into the house. There in the house I saw some Anarsi women who said, Best wishes and Allah's blessing and a good luck. Then she entrusted me to them and they prepared me for the marriage. Unexpectedly, Allah's apostle came to me in the forenoon and my mother handed me over to him. And at that time I was a girl of nine years of age. Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 58, Number 2324. Narrated Aisha, I used to play with dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's Apostle used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves. Look, they had to run from this Prophet, he was so filthy and disgusting. But the Prophet would call them to join and play with me. The playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at the time, and she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. Fathia al Bari, page 143, volume 13, Sahih, book 8, book, sorry, Sahih, volume 8, book 73, number 151. Here is the proof from the Quran, 65, verse 4 of the Quran. Such of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them the prescribed period, if ye have any doubts, is three months. And for those who have no courses, meaning little children, it is the same. Two sick, filthy, disgusting, perversion, plague to this planet religion this is. For those who carry life within their wombs, their period is until they deliver their burdens. And for those who fear Allah, he will make their path easy. And this still goes on in the Middle East, where you have children being married to older men. And it is disgusting. And this religion is a plague to the planet. And it destroys any country it touches. Chapter 4 verse 24 of the Quran says, Also prohibited are women already married, except those whom your right hand possesses. Meaning, you can have sex with any girls you take as slaves. As the Muslims they do. No matter what age they are. Also you can have sex with animals as there's many hadith books talking about that and how to wash after having sex with animals. In fact, you know, it's funny how he wants to talk about logic in Islam. There's a, a hadith saying that if a man or a woman has sex with an animal, uh, sorry, if a man has sex with an animal and the animal produces a child, from that, that the child belongs to the owner of the animal. Yuck. Okay. So thus, let's continue on right here. Thus Allah has ordained 
prohibitions. What prohibitions against you? Except for these, all others are lawful. Produce, provided ye seek them in marriage, with gifts from your property, desiring chastity, not lust, seeing that ye derive benefit from them. Give them their dowers, mean them give them their pay for their sexual deeds, at least as prescribed. But if, after a dower is prescribed, ye agree mutually to vary it, there is no blame on you, and Allah is all-knowing and all-wise. Now let's talk about Muhammad beating up his little child wife that he had. Sahih Muslim, meaning authentic book, Muslim. Book 4, number 2127, Muhammad struck his favorite wife Aisha in the chest one evening when she left the house without his permission. Aisha narrates, he struck me on the chest which caused me pain. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad beat up his baby wife, as the Quran teaches in Surah 4, Ayat 34. Men are the maintainers of women because Allah has made some of them to excel others and because they spend out of their property. So basically, because you spend money on your wife, that makes her your property. And you can lock her up in your house if you want to. You can... Uh, force her to do as you please. In fact, there's a hadith saying that if a woman is unwilling to have sex with you in the night, that the angels will curse her all night. Let's continue on in this 434b. And the good women are therefore obedient, guarding the unseen as Allah hath guarded. And... As to those on whose part you fear desertion, admonish them and leave them alone in the sleeping places, and beat them. And might I say the word lightly does not appear in the original Arabic. This was added in to make Islam look better. Then if they obey you, do not seek a way against them. Surely Allah is high and great, and he is not. He is filthy, low, and satanic. Let's hear what he has to say. Well, this is supposedly a prophet of God. So let's judge it by other sources of God's teaching from 2,000 years ago. And guess what? He failed to measure up. You have a problem here with logics. What is the logic of your argument? There are priests in America molesting little boys. There are pastors in America and all over the world molesting children. Look what happened in Chad. With the it is easy. They will go to hell for what they did. So what? You're judging these priests as if this, as if this is God's teaching. Look what Christ he said. Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to sin are bound to come. Even as in his name, he said, beware of those who are wolves in sheep's clothing. But woe to that person through, through whom they come. He says, woe to them. It should be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a milestone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. So Jesus is saying, it is better if these pedophiles were never even alive. Here's what we're judging. We're judging what your God teaches and what your prophet did. And your God allowing this. So my question to you is, if these child molester priests, who are no priests, who will go to hell, who will be punished severely by God for doing such a thing, are a problem for you. How do you permit your God to allow such a thing? That was our thing, where these Christian workers were, were stealing African children and using them for pornography. These were Muslim children, and these were Christians who were perpetrating this crime. They're not Christians. Jesus said, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord. Who is it that called Jesus Lord? It's the Christians. Not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, on the day of judgment will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And I will say to them plainly on that day, get away from me, you filthy, wicked, evildoer. I never knew you. So just because they claim to be Christian does not mean they are. The reason why you want to go back 1,400 years and leave your jurisdiction 
and try to convict the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by an ex post facto law is to distract the people from what you're doing today. There from what we're doing? Okay, these people will go to hell. And to say that there's no Muslim uh, leaders that do this as well is completely filthy. And your God allows it. Your God permitted Muhammad to do that. And I've given you all the proofs. I've given you all the sources. How to divorce little girls who haven't had their periods yet. As 65 verse 4 of the Quran teaches. So if this is a problem for you, why is it wrong for the Christians to do it, yet it's alright for your God to teach you to do that? 